Welcome to worship today here at Grace Lutheran Church in Boone, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Steve and on behalf of our whole congregation, I want to welcome you as we gather to worship together online. Now today is Holy Trinity Sunday and we have a special guest, David uh, Holden will be preaching and proclaiming the message. You may remember you heard from him last on Transfiguration Sunday, a sermon that I still remember to this day. So thank you, David, for being here uh, today to, to lead our worship with the sermon. A couple of other announcements for you as well. Next Sunday is Graduate Recognition Sunday. This will be for our high school graduates. We also do uh, in our bulletin normally honor any sort of college graduates. So if you, get, if you have a degree you're getting, an advanced degree of some kind, and you'd like to share that with the church, please email that over to Sabina in our office. Just a couple of other announcements. Uh, May 30th, later this week, we'll do our next green bag collection. We notice we're actually out of green bags, so when they pick up, they'll leave some more bags for us. Uh, but you're welcome to bring food by the church this week for the Thursday morning pickup. Uh, it's not too early to start signing up now. For Saturday, June the 8th, we'll have our blood drive here at Grace. The way that system works, you go to redcrossblood.org and you'll find our drive and you can pick your time. You can sign up for a time slot and even get some paperwork done ahead of time to make it very efficient. Sabina also wanted me to mention as a reminder that we're on social media at Grace. Uh, we're on Instagram, but we also have a public Facebook page, Grace Lutheran uh, Church in Boone, but we additionally have a private Facebook group, Grace Lutheran Boone Congregation. Now, and that shares stuff more uh, internally, and folks from the church can post various different things going on. Uh, so if you are interested in participating in that private group, you just find it and ask for an invite, and we'll try to keep an eye on and make sure we can let you in. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin, kneeling as we are able. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you, 
where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can we enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I was a rather moody and depressed teenager. I still get that way from time to time, but when I was a teenager, my depressive episodes were much more frequent and much more intense than they are now. When I would get in such a mood, my mother would sometimes say to me, every day, in every way, life is getting better and better. I did not find that remark particularly helpful. Even as a kid, I knew that if one thing in the whole world stayed the same from one day to the next, then my mother's declaration was false. 
Forty years later, I learned that my mother's well-intended counsel was almost a quotation. The original form of the saying was, every day in every way, I am getting better and better. The line comes from Emile Cui, a French pharmacist and psychologist who lived between 1857 and 1926. He was a master of what we now call auto-suggestion. He used it with good results on many patients, and plenty of self-help gurus on the internet are still using it. But notice when Kui lived, the end of the 19th century, perhaps the most optimistic age in the history of the Western world, the age of newly discovered evolution, of confidence in reason, science, industry, democracy, and education. That age came to a crashing end with the First World War. When the gas clouds finally lifted in 1918, Kui's optimistic advice faded away, and thinking people remembered a much older saying from Thomas Hobbes that human life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. What kind of world do we live in? Everything is always changing, but are things getting better? Or worse? Or pretty much staying the same? Is the world in some kind of order? Or was Macbeth right when he said that life is a tale told by an idiot signifying nothing? And how can we possibly know which of these attitudes is true? If we go inward and examine our inmost selves, we find a swirling mix of love and hate perceived fact and desired fantasy, reconciliation, res resolution toward good mixed with resignation in evil. So we have to agree with the prophet Jeremiah who said, the heart is devious above all things. It is perverse. Who can understand it? But if we go outward, what do we observe? We do see infinite variety and soaring beauty. In the sun by day, in the stars by night, in the flowers of the springtime, in the leaves of the fall. But we also see that all things must come to an end. That along with wonder and beauty, we live in the midst of violence, disease, and death. So our reason, science, philosophy, seem to get us nowhere. But the gospel is this is a choice we do not have to make. We do not understand the world by going inward. We do not understand the world by looking outward. We understand the world by looking at a person. What was it like to be around Jesus? He captured people's hearts right away. He traveled deep into the thoughts and feelings and secrets of the people that he talked with. One woman said to her neighbors, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. But there was more. Regarding his teachings, some people said, never has anyone spoken like this. After, hearing a after healing a paralyzed man, people said, we have never heard anything like this. We have never seen anything like this. 
after an exorcism, people said, what kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and out they come. After calming a storm on a lake, his disciples were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? But then the situation changed. What was it like to be around the resurrected Jesus? When some women discovered that his tomb was empty, they ran away from it as fast as they could go. St. Mark said, terror and amazement had seized them. When Jesus appeared to his disciples alive, they could hardly believe it. St. Luke said, in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. But soon enough, their doubts were resolved. St. Matthew said, they took hold of his feet and worshiped him. The most hard-headed realist among the disciples was not present the first time Jesus returned to them. But when he saw Jesus face to face, he spoke the most exalted creed in the Bible. My Lord and my God. But then the situation changed again. The early disciples found that the things that they had felt and experienced when Jesus was on earth kept on happening. When the apostles preached, St. Luke tells us, people were cut to the heart, just as Jesus himself had moved them in the depths of their hearts. When the apostles healed people, all came upon everyone, just as they had felt when they had witnessed the mighty acts of the Lord himself. The things that Jesus had done when he was on earth were now happening to people anywhere and everywhere. Just as the resurrection had changed Peter from a cowardly betrayer into a courageous voice that could address thousands of people, so did the resurrection transform the lives of people in ever-widening circles, like a stone dropped in a lake, moving in bigger circles on and on. The early Christians found that the reality that they had met in the person of Jesus was the same reality working in their communities and in their hearts. They called this reality the Holy Spirit. And that reality in the depths of their hearts led them to see an infinitely more vast horizon. The early Jewish Christians had been educated to believe in the God of the Bible, the Hebrew Bible. The early non-Christian, non-Jewish Christians had been educated to believe in many gods and goddesses and perhaps some great metaphysical first principle from which the gods arose. But plainly, Jesus had been raised by the power that governs death and nothingness. And plainly, the Holy Spirit was able to penetrate beyond all body and mind, all flesh and soul. The reality that they had met in Jesus and the reality that they had met in the depths of their own hearts was the same as the reality that had created all things. Jesus called that reality the one true God. But he also called that reality Abba, the children's word for daddy. Friends, we celebrate today the fact and experience of the Trinity, not the theory of the Trinity. The theory of the Trinity, or the doctrine, or the theology, if you prefer to call it that, is seriously important, and not just for historical, theoretical, or academic reasons. The theory of the Trinity 
is a safeguard against all kinds of misunderstandings that have some serious consequences. But this theory is notoriously subtle and baffling. Furthermore, as often happens with theories, the theory of the Trinity is rather far removed from our experience. The theory of the Trinity is to the Trinity what hydrology is to water. Hydrology is the study of the movement and management of water. It's a very good thing to know about when you want to build dams and septic systems and clean water facilities. But you don't need to know much about it when you drink a glass of water or wash your hands or take a bath or go swimming or wash your car. The Trinity is a fact of our experience. We experience God among us, within us, and beyond us. And that fact gives us answers to all kinds of questions that we cannot otherwise answer, all the way from sex and marriage up to politics. But one of the most important questions it addresses is, what kind of world do we live in? The fact of the Trinity illuminates our inner world. Because the Spirit within us is one with Christ our Lord, we can know that no matter how lustful and greedy, how violent and self-centered we might become, that is not our deepest, truest nature. And the fact is that we were meant to love, just as God loves, just as God pours sun and rain on everybody. And the fact that the Trinity, the fact of the Trinity illuminates our outer world. Because Jesus is the face of the Father and Creator, we can know that no matter how small and unimportant something may seem, or how monstrous and how horrible some creature may appear, or how horrendous a catastrophe an earthquake or a tsunami or a supernova would be, it is not so. All things come from the one true God who loves us and everything that he has made. Whether we can see it or not, we can trust that everything really is working together for good. What kind of world do we live in? At the core and center of the world, one is three and three are one. At the core and center of the world, we see the source of all that is speaking a word and breathing a fire. At the core and center of the world, we find a love that has always been, a love that shall always be, a love that embraces everything. And so we know it is a good world, an ordered world, a supremely precious world, and our place in it is to burn with the fire who burns in all places and fills all things, to shout with the word that still thunders from his empty grave, and to return our lives to the ocean that is the fountain of life.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers of the church for today were prepared by Charlie Wallen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Abba, God, you have brought us into your family, claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith with gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Guide us to include and welcome all as they are, as we anticipate and respond to the needs of our congregation and community. Help us continue to seek ways to grow in relationship with you as we share your love so that all are served and supported. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love and power burst forth in, the flash, in flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and the deeply rooted trees of the forest. As we enter our summer season, Lord, we give thanks for the many outdoor activities that provide an opportunity to connect with you through nature, including fishing, hiking, biking, swimming, floating down the river, Tweetsy Railroad Park, Grandfather Mountain Park, Rocky Knob Park, and many more. Bless the times when our community gathers these summer months, including for Bigfoot games, Appalachian FC matches, the Boomerang Festival, and all our outdoor concert series across the county. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give your blessing of peace to the nations. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. Shelter all, all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence and injustice. Bring peace to Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. Bring stability in Iran following the death of two of their leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing, including those in Italy as they recover from re recent earthquakes, those in the Midwest who are dealing with tornadoes and severe storms, those across the country who are enduring extreme heat, those in our local community working to contain a recent outbreak of whooping cough. Comfort those on our prayer list and those who we now offer up in silence as we care for and comfort each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray for adoptive and foster families, multi-generational households and blended families. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. We ask for your wisdom and guidance, Lord, as we seek a new youth and family minister. Give us the discerning power to know your will and direction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Spirit bears witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As they lived with hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Our worship continues now with the offering. You can use the QR code on our screen to go over to our donate page where you'll see many opportunities to donate in support of our mission, which is to share God's love so that all are served and supported. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. 
Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>